plesiosaur propulsion study. The author study proposes that plesiosaurs utilized all four flippers simultaneously for maximum power, with the four flippers and pelvic flippers running through separate planes of motion one atop the other. This theory contraindicates recent studies that have proposed that plesiosaurs utilize only their front or rear flippers for propulsion, with the remaining pair functioning for steering, as well as theories that all four flippers were used in an alternate or overlapping figure eight pattern. I'm Max Hawthorne, or at least this is my voice, and I will be sharing with you today my theory on plesiosaur propulsion. There have been a lot of studies in the news lately showing computer-generated plesiosaurs swimming through the water. Frankly, I found them all to be very robotic, stiff, and unnatural. My own personal theory on plesiosaur locomotion is completely different, and although I am not a paleontologist by trade, my background does include animation, kinesiology, and anatomy. And I also throw in some good old-fashioned common sense. Please keep in mind that what I'm sharing with you is very crude. The drawings were done on copy paper and with a Sharpie, and I'm using my phone to do the animation, so I apologize for any lack of polish. Moving on to the first drawing, you're looking at your basic, albeit roughly drawn, Cretaceous pliosaur with a 5 to 1 head to body length ratio. These are the fore flippers. These are the hind or rear flippers. Popular theory is, once again, that only one set of these is generally used, or that instead they take turns and do a figure eight type movement. This set of flippers pushes through the water then stops while this one goes, they take turns, or they do a figure eight swinging back and forth like this. But in no time do both flippers push against the water at the same time. Why? Because if all four flippers are used to push together against the water, basically the theory is that no additional water is moved. So there is more effort and no additional speed gained. Now, if that was what was happening, the extra was, would be right. But it's not, and they are wrong. If you look at the body shape, once again, I apologize for the crudeness of this animal, you will notice that the insertion points for the humerus here and for the femur here are at different angles. There's a slope here, a slope here. This is what allows the flippers to move in different planes of motion. And that, combined with good old-fashioned physics, is the secret to plesiosaur locomotion. Let's start with the negative or reverse stroke. And we're going to move on to the next image. This is where the animal brings its fins back to the chamber before it pushes. During the negative stroke, the fins travel in the same plane of motion, one following the other. Why wouldn't they? The rear pair actually get a break from the vacuum provided by the front pair working, kind of like a suction. We're going to continue all the way until the flippers are in what I call the chamber. Now, for the record, I will point out that this rear flipper's range of motion does exceed the accepted norms However, for purpose of the animation, and so that you can properly see how this flipper will be moving through its own plane, it's a little bit necessary, so you'll have to bear with me. Now, once the positive or power stroke, where push or thrust is generated, takes place, the flippers will diverge. This is where the experts are missing their mark. What's happening is the front flipper seen here, will continue to move laterally backward and with some slight downward push like a sea turtle does. But the rear pair, here and here, arc upward and then push back and down. So what happens is both flippers are operating in a different plane of motion. 
the front set is pushing water in this range, the rear set is pushing water in this range. The animal is able to move twice as much water, thereby generating significantly more speed. You can think of it like a fish or a whale having a tail that's twice the size, or as I like to put it, a sea lion that's on nitrous oxide. The end result is an animal that can accelerate very quickly and hit speeds few other predators, or prey for that matter, can match. Now I'm going to back the images up. And we are going to run forward in as much as I can do real time using my cell phone and the screen in front of you. Let's see how it looks. We're going to test our theory and run through at speed. Now, as you can see, the flippers do not interfere with one another, and the animal was able to push water through two different planes of motions, as I mentioned. This is natural. This is not robotic. This is smooth and sleek. And I'm going to do it one more time going forward. This is what nature designed for these animals and why they ruled the seas for well over 100 million years. If anyone has any questions, you can look me up on the Cronus Rising fan page on Facebook. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope this was informative.